Hello everyone. This story is called Curly Whirly and the Giant Kelp Forest. Right, as you can tell by the date at the bottom here, I wrote this five years ago and it's one of my original stories that I've written. So I hope you enjoy it. And here we go. Flying high in the sky above Barracuda Bay, planes Curly and Whirly were taking Mr. Lobster, the lighthouse keeper, on a special trip. They were headed for Dolphin Point, the most westerly and most dangerous headland in Barracuda Bay. Over hundreds of years, ships have run aground and hit the rocks at Dolphin Point, leaving them shipwrecked. Some ships sunk to the bottom of the sea, but not all of them. Mr. Lobster was taking Curly and Whirly to visit a shipwreck that had hidden treasures inside it. They landed safely at the headland. Curly and Whirly watched from the top as Mr. Lobster climbed down from the clifftop to reach the shipwreck at the bottom. Be careful, Mr. Lobster, shouted Curly, who was looking rather worried. Don't worry, Curly, said Whirly. Mr. Lobster knows this headland like every ship that's ever sailed past his lighthouse. Whirly could see that Mr. Lobster was waving up at him. He had safely made it to the bottom. Phew! I told you Mr. Lobster is fearless, smiled Whirly. I wonder what treasures he has found. Mr. Lobster signaled for Curly and Whirly to fly down to the shipwreck. He's found something, Curly. Come on, let's go see what it is. Whirly was excited. Curly was nervous. Mr. Lobster was holding a small box and a bottle with a piece of paper inside it. Is there a message in the bottle? asked Whirly curiously. There's only one way to find out, smiled Mr. Lobster, and he smashed to open the bottle against a rock. The lighthouse keeper had a big smile on his face. It's a map, beamed Mr. Lobster. A treasure map. Now this is exciting. For the first time that day, Curly was having fun. What does it say? Mr. Lobster was careful not to rip the map. It's a map of Barracuda Bay. Look, here is the harbour, Bluefin Bluff and Dolphin Point. I've even drawn my lighthouse on it, he said. But there were some things on the map that Mr. Lobster had never seen before. The map says there should be a buried treasure where the giant X marks the spot. But Mr. Lob Mr. Lobster was very puzzled. But that means the treasure is out in the middle of the sea. Well, it must be out there somewhere and we're going to find it. Come on, you two. We're going on a treasure hunt. Curly and Whirly took Mr. Lobster back to the harbour. And Mr. Lobster had his daily mug of cocoa and a chocolate biscuit from Mrs. Crabley's cafe before grabbing some tools from his lighthouse. Let's go and find us some treasure, he roared, in great anticipation of what they might discover. They began the treasure hunt by flying, a, flying beyond Dolphin Point and headed west out into open waters. Curly and Whirly had been flying for almost 30 minutes when Mr. Lobster spotted something in the water below. Jumping jellyfish! Would you look at that! Have you ever seen anything so magnificent? The two planes flew down to get a closer look. They had found a giant kelp forest. It was home to a lot of sea animals. Mr. Lobster's favourite animal lived there, the sea otter. Kelp look like towers of giant seaweed, said Mr. Lobster, but they are in fact large brown algae that live in cool shallow waters close to shore. And these giant towers provide food and shelter for thousands of fish, invertebrates and marine mammals such as seals and sea lions. Sea otters live here too. Seabirds use the kelp forest to shelter their young from predators and even rough storms. Mr. Lobster had packed his diving suit just in case and was soon swimming in the water amongst the giant kelp. Mr. Lobster was also clever enough to remember his underwater camera. He was going to take photos of all the amazing sea creatures he could find and then show everybody back home in Barracuda Bay. He swam with a sea lion. He followed a hermit crab as it found a new home. And then he played chase with a shoal of baby rockfish. Mr. Lobster was enjoying himself enormously. What an amazing day this is, he beamed. But he still hadn't seen a single sea otter. Where are they? He thought sadly. Mr. Lobster decided to have one final swim in Munster Kelp. Much to his delight, he found a sea otter floating amongst the kelp up at the surface. Sea otters belong to the weasel family, said Mr. Lobster. They live along the coast of the northern and eastern North Pacific Ocean. They each have a very thick coat of fur to keep them warm throughout the cold winter months. Sea otters can use tools such as rocks to prise open shells. They are very important to kelp forests as they prey on sea urchins who can destroy vast areas of kelp without controlling their numbers. Mr. Lobster swam up to the sea otter and started taking photographs using his underwater camera. To Curly and Whirly, it appeared to them that Mr. Lobster was talking to the otter. The two planes hovered overhead but they did so quietly without disturbing it. Mr. Lobster had a secret. He could speak otter. Curly and Whirly, I would like you to meet Ollie the sea otter. 
He has kindly let me take some photos of him floating amongst the kelp. Ollie was very friendly and playful. He seemed very relaxed as he floated on top of the kelp. Curly got a surprise when Ollie started talking to him. Hello, I've never seen you here before. What are you doing up in the sky? You should be swimming in the sea. Ollie had never seen a plane before. Now he had seen two. I'm an aeroplane, replied Curly. I belong in the sky. I don't think planes were made for swimming. If I tried, I'd probably end up at the bottom of the sea with the shipwrecks. Everyone laughed as Mr. Lobster made a splash in the water. I like having my picture taken, smiled Ollie, as he posed for another photo. All this is making my tummy rumble. Lunch time! Mr. Lobster dived down after Ollie as he searched for his lunch. Urchin was on the menu. That was Ollie's favourite snack. He could eat up to four a day. Ollie returned with an urchin in his mouth, but he had some bad news. Large areas of the forest have been damaged, he said. There is a large army of urchins heading this way. We must stop them. If we don't do something now, the entire forest will be lost and all the creatures that live here will lose their homes, said Ollie sadly. There must be a way to stop them, thought Curly. Mr. Lobster appeared from underneath the kelp. Ollie is right, he said. There's an army coming. Then Whirly had an idea. Why don't we move them to another patch of forest further down the coast? That sounds good to me, said Ollie. But this army is ruthless. Their numbers are enormous and they just keep on coming. It's worth a try, said Curly. Mr. Lobster agreed. We must help Ollie and the other animals of this kelp forest. We cannot allow the urchins to destroy this wonderful place. Whirly's idea can at least stop the urchins from tearing down this part of the forest, he said. Mr. Lobster and Ollie swam down towards the army of urchins and began to place, place them inside a large net. Once the urchins had been collected, they swam up to the surface where Curly and Whirly carried them to a new patch of forest further along the coast. They then released the urchins back into the water. Curly and Whirly had to make many trips back and forth to the urchins' new home. They worked hard carrying the heavy nets all afternoon. Mr. Lobster was very proud of them. Jolly good work, you two, he smiled. Mr. Lobster was very tired. He had worked hard collecting the urchins from the seabed. Ollie was very thankful to Mr. Lobster and the planes for helping to save kelp forest from the army of urchins. The little sea otter had a tear in his eye. Thanks to you, he said. I still have a home. The sea urchins may return again soon, but we will be ready to defend against them if that happens. I don't know how to thank you enough. Please come back and visit, said Ollie. Definitely, replied Curly and Whirly together. They had made a new friend in Ollie. Now they could speak otter too, just like Mr. Lobster. And Mr. Lobster was very sad to leave the kelp forest too. He had taken lots of photos using his underwater camera. I will never forget you, Ollie, smiled Mr. Lobster. He was getting quite upset himself. Look after the forest for me. One day we will return to see this wonderful place. In the meantime, watch out for those urchins. Ollie waved goodbye to his new friends before diving down to, into the kelp to hunt for his supper. It was time to return home to Barracuda Bay. Curly Whirly and Mr. Lobster took one final look at the kelp forest. Then Mr. Lobster realised something truly astonishing. Curly Whirly, look down there. Tell me what you see. Curly looked down at the water beneath his wings. Look at the shape of the forest. It's shaped just like an X, laughed Whirly happily. The kelp forest was the treasure. Mr. Lobster took one final photo from up in the air. Amazing! They returned to the harbour safely and rushed to tell everybody about the kelp forest and all the animals that lived there. Mr. Lobster showed Mr. Ray, the harbour master, his photos of Ollie swimming amongst the kelp. Looks like you three have had an exciting adventure today, he said. Mrs. Crabbly made Mr. Lobster a nice warm mug of hot cocoa. The lighthouse keeper closed his eyes to remember all the magical creatures he had met in the kelp forest. Then he suddenly remembered the box that he had found in the shipwreck. He opened it up to find an old sketchbook bound in kelp. Inside were sketches of animals that lived in the forest, including one of a sea otter catching an urchin in on the seabed. Would you believe it? Mr. Lobster certainly couldn't. Ha <laughs> ha! And that is the end of the story. I really hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time.